Hi folks, Wes Penny here. I um, wanted to do a quick video for you. Um, and this is kind of geared towards maybe newer tires or anybody who's struggling to keep their profiles and thread build up really, really small with the smaller pattern. Um, so this is a size 18. I'm going to tie a black and red coronamid, but this is a size 18. You can see it's quite small. And I'm using a fire hole 718. Um, so this is a 2x long medium wire hook. They have a very nice wide gape and they're great coronamid hooks. So the first consideration is your tying thread. And I use a product from Techstream called Power Thread. So this is the small um, version. It's a 50 denier. It's extremely strong. You probably will never break it when you're tying. It, it doesn't fray um, and it spins out flat very easily. Probably the single biggest thing that changed my tying and made me a better tire was going to this thread. Now it's a lot like Semperfly Nano Thread, um, but it's much stronger and it doesn't fray as much as a Nano Thread. They're both good threads, but this is by far my favorite and it's white. So we'll, we'll tie in behind the bead. It's a 1 16th bead on the size 18 hook. And just eight or so wraps just to get started. Now the most important thing with this thread and tying in general is to keep your thread flat. And that's what's going to make the difference in your profile and the thread buildup. So this thread specifically is really easy to, to get flat. You can see if I hold it up against the bodkin that it's not very flat. Now if you use your bodkin and just leave it there, and counter spin, you'll be able to see the thread flatten out. So you just kind of just move it up and down a bit. You'll see right there that it's that it's that it's really nice and flat. And that's how you want your thread to be when you wrap. So from there we'll wrap in extra small red wire. And one of the things you want to do here is always make sure that your wire runs along the opposite side of the hook from you. So you want it to follow the curve of the hook and stay on the side. It has a tendency, if, if you don't watch it, to either move up or move underneath. And then you're going to end up with these bumps in your pattern and it won't look right. And then I'm going to tie in, at the same time, some black flashaboo. So we can hold them together. Let's make sure that our thread is still nice and flat. Counter spin. Looks pretty good. And I'm going to hold them together. Now if you hold your wire up at a bit of an angle as you wrap, that'll help a lot in keeping it following along the side of the hook. So we'll start wrapping. Touching turns. The thread's nice and flat so it covers a nice big area. And then we'll just keep that wire up and go as far into the bend as you would like to go. Right about there. And then we'll go back up. So now you can see <clears throat> that there's almost no buildup of thread. Um, this is really not much thicker than the original hook itself. You can see on this side that the wire follows all the way along the side. And there's no bumps. It's going to be a nice smooth profile. So I'm going to use the thread. And again, I'm going to check that it's flat. A little counter spin. And there you'll see it start to flatten out. I'm going to use the thread to build up the body. So we'll go down a ways. Start coming up. See the thread's nice and flat. It's kind of flared out a bit. And we'll do, go back and forth a couple times until we end up with that nice tapered profile that's important in a chronomy pattern. Now I can tell that my thread is starting to cord up a little bit. So I'll go back, counter spin. And it starts to flatten out right about there. So it doesn't take long, but it's really important to do. So there's the profile. 
It's still very slender, but it's got a nice taper from the bead down to the hook point. So we'll do a two turn whip finish. You can pull down in this quite hard. It's not gonna break. So we make sure that whip finish is nice and secure. And then I'm gonna take the black flashaboo and we'll wrap that up. Now the advantage of a rotary vise it's just, it's quicker and easier than <clears throat> doing all these hand over hand wraps. And one thing that'll help you as well with a rotary vise is once you clear the hook point, now you can kind of hold the flash. So right there, I'm pretty clear of the hook point. So you can hold the flash boot in place at a tiny bit of an angle towards the bead. You don't have to move your hand and just turn and it'll automatically just wind its way up. So we'll tie that in. So then I'll go back and do another two turn whip finish. And then we'll bring the, the wire up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, when you go to do the thorax, um, your wraps are, are important. So in order to get a nice, even and neat thorax, spin out your thread one more time, get it nice and flat. And then when you finish that, you wanna make sure you're placing the thread exactly where you want it. So you're kind of covering any little holes and divots and you build up against the bead. Now, rather than changing beads to to get a rust colored or brown thorax, um, I just use a, a marker. So it's a kind of a bronze colored Sharpie and color the thread. The Techstream Power Thread takes marker colors very well. And then it'll just do a couple of wraps to cover. And whip finish. So we haven't changed threads at all. And you can see on there that the profile is nice and slender. It's not built up, it's not bulky. Uh, it's just a much more attractive pattern. And using the power thread, I guarantee will make you a better tire. Now, if you, when you wanna put your resin or sallies or super glue, whatever you use, Rather than going from the bottle, put it on the end of your bodkin and place it on there. You'll use less. It's easy just to run it down along the sides and the top. Just move the resin with your bodkin. A little bit up on the thorax. Kind of get a little bit of ink on there and we'll add a tiny bit underneath and that's it so there you have a size 18 chronomid tying in two materials using only one thread. You can see that the profile is super slender. Uh, there's no buildup and there's no bulk. Um, and it's just a really nice little pattern. So hope that helps, um, helps you with a few tips. 
and gives you some some ideas on how you can um, keep your profiles nice and slim and overall become a better tire. Thanks for watching.